Good morning from Yami B TV or afternoon when this video gets you. As you can see, I'm out and about today, sending you loads of love. Um, following on from this morning, you know, when we talked about in Just For Today about the emptiness and loneliness, uh, and there's always a lot of um, theories and, and talk about where it actually comes from. I know that since I've been released, uh, you know, I found that a lot of places I frequent, whether be it be old age pensioners who obviously suffer the most over loneliness, you know, for one reason or another. And then obviously other people as well, who since I've been out tell me that just because I've been away 10, 20, 30, 40, you know, in bits, of, in, in long periods, uh, they've also been prisoners in their own homes as well, for one reason or another, whether it be losing someone close to them, break up of relationships, suffering hurt, uh, with kids being taken away, what, all, all the kind of things that can leave you feeling and having your self-worth questioned, which again can lead to really serious bouts of isolation. Um, today, which is funny because um, I was just getting driven over West London and I'm outside, I'm in Brunel Estate, which is not far from uh, Labbot Grove, Mozart Estates down the road there, and Bayswater's down the other way here. But this is why it's so significant, because I thought I'll stop off while I was talking about um, loneliness and the possibilities of where uh, it could all stem from, especially in my story. You know, many of you have suffered the fate uh, that I have suffered uh, as well. Many of us have had uh, similar traumatic uh, abuse things happening by way of not just of my kind, but of many kinds that they never, never really come to terms with and get over. So today I'm in Brunel Estate and look, you see that door there, right? The little white one next to the green little um, garage or whatever, up above that, that's the children's home and that is the door that I used to sneak out of at night, leave the mat so the door didn't lock automatically when I used to go searching for Mumsy, which would have been down in the bars down in Queensway. On top of that there was my bedroom where we know sadly some horrific things uh, happened uh, at that time, which of course led uh, to me stabbing somebody and you know the rest is history kind of thing and we know that ever since then I've been in an institution basically all my life you know uh, for, yeah it's that but is that the only reason why I spent my whole life in there did I ever come to terms with actually what happened here and the isolating and oh, oh sorry no uh, the feeling of those lonesome sinking moments from an early age especially when you know, as well as feeling that way, the feelings that are making you feel that way, uh, you have to live amongst, you know. But I remember the, the old, old sinking feeling. You know, in the past, I used to walk past here, this, this um, estate, and I never used to want to come into it. It used to feel that bad for me, and it used to trigger me off to do all kinds, to go and steal, take drugs, associate with others that are, you know, not so, uh, not in a good place as well. It had so many reminders and triggers, and especially, obviously, the worstest thing of all, which is you end up going to prison, and it starts from this place here. But today, it doesn't feel that way. It feels like I'm strong enough to be able to handle that, or maybe even a couple of months ago when I had the abuse things going on, drugs-wise, would, would them feelings have been a bit more harder to deal with today as I'm, we're driving through to see this you know uh, but there there you have it I can't say too much because I've just had a phone call just now uh, about the fly on the wall documentary about all this kind of stuff and my life from beginning to start so you see the kind of things uh, especially for the youth as well to see how I grew up uh, the kind of role models that were around and the sense of belonging and you know nobody else in your life really to love you know you, you're not allowed to see your mum and dad there's no one else there so and then, of course you know I, I remember one Christmas I had in there like I associated with it don't matter how, how which way you butter it up I think that any Christmas that I had in there or even when I was younger and I couldn't go home to have Christmas with mum and dad and, and sisters etc from a very very early age I think it was from the age of 10 I never had a Christmas at home uh, but when somebody else takes um, your place play, takes their place to try and make it a happy time for you a happy Christmas you know they're doing it out of the kindness of their heart someone's mum invite invite Yami over or Samson over uh, make him feel a bit better because they feel quite sorry for you because you're not going to have the normal family happy day of Christmas celebration just one example with the Christmas thing but I'll tell you one thing it still never made me feel better because it always made me believe 
that there was something wrong with me, that everybody was trying to make it a nice time for me because of what's happened to me and my situation and circumstances. So as much as that you, you, you're grateful and appreciative and you, you know, it's nice to feel that, you, 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 you still feel that you're different, if you get what I mean, uh, when you're not experiencing those uh, close relationships with mum, dad, and you're the odd one out and everybody else, you know, you, you start thinking, you get on that poor me and the sinking thing, which I don't really uh, get on anymore because you know the, the moving forward stage with me now is to express and let people know exactly what I was feeling and thinking about such things and to help them know that you're not very you're not all alone in this world that there are places now where you can get help that you didn't have back in the day you know that lonesome feeling I think you know to be honest right from an early age um, is that I used to find the institutions and going to prison, DC, Ellsbury, etc., and, and forever in the day easier because of the familiarity of pain, you know? But the pain that you suffered here uh, helped you to really uh, deal with your pain in there, if you get what I mean. So I'll, I'll explain it if you don't a, a little bit because that familiar sense of the sinking feeling of doom and gloom and feeling lonely, you know, all alone in the world, uh, when you're in there, when you keep repeating it, re repeating it, getting that same old feeling and pain and feelings, you get used to it. So that's what I mean by familiar. So it's easy to deal with, but it's not the right way to feel, you know? To, for me to have done it all my life, that oh, uh, it means that because you're feeling down and you feel lonely and you haven't got anybody in your life, it means that, you know, it means that you're a baddie, that you must go and um, rob and steal and da, da 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 because this is where the learning process started from. And I think a lot of it as well, um, we could also talk about rejection. You know, when you're young, you think that, you know, you, you, your mum doesn't really want you, did, you know, they did this because of that and, you, you, you know, they've taken away, you know, your chance of a really uh, decent upbringing uh, like that kind of thing. But no, I... I I, I, in them early days of being a child, I kind of, I kind of thought, Mum, why, you know, why couldn't I, you know? But it was more the, the, not so much the rejection from her because you remember it's a, a court order and a, and social services that make that kind of decision, not Mum and Dad. You know, if your dad has a, a stroke and your mum takes an overdose, there's no one really to look after you. All right, uh, you know, we, you, you've got to be put somewhere, you know. But the trust issues as well. You know, from it didn't work out, from you, you, the very people that were meant to be looking after you didn't, you know, how hell are you, how the hell are you going to ever trust uh, many, many others as well? Like me and Tony were talking this morning about family and we know that I haven't really got none, you know, since mum's gone, you know, I'm not in contact with nobody. But again, the reasons I say about family is, is uh, my brother, my nephew, my uncle, my sister, is because obviously, uh, without having, you know, much of it uh, to resonate with. It feels like I've been trying to find a family in later life that I could love and feel really close to and uh, the feelings. And I think that stems again from here because you never, you, you searched all over to, to find that closeness from strangers, from people you just met, and there's a whole lot of letdowns along the way. Uh, but now we find out that you can still find family. You can still uh, get them, them values and feel that feeling uh, when you make, when you find new friends or people or long-term friends that you really connect with. And I call them family now. So it's almost like I've adopted a new family to make up for the family probably uh, that I didn't really get to experience enough over them 40, 50 years. Is it wrong for me to do it that way? I don't believe so. I don't believe so because I'm finding sometimes you're not always right. You think somebody's, you know, yeah, family, yes, yes, my brother, yes, cool, cool, when you realise, yes, you do feel something for them. But is it the same as that real love that I have for a few people out here now? Uh, that real closeness that when you're together, there's no lying, you know, that everybody puts their cards on the table and not scared to talk about their fears and their vulnerabilities and all that kind of stuff. And then you resonate with that and hearts connect. And then you realize that, you know, they're safe havens because people are letting you into secrets that they haven't let, let nobody else into before, which brings you closer. So, you know, that, that loneliness, the sinking feeling in there, you know, it kind of kind of spared me on a bit all them years, you know, that self-destructive thing of, you know, I don't care what happens to me, but it does matter now in later life. 
You know, it does matter because as much as these the wicked ones uh, played a part in, in not letting you have, and they held some kind of power over you, because you, a power over you, because you can't make, uh, you weren't strong enough to say yes, or you wasn't strong enough to say no. My belief, and it's not for everyone, obviously, you, you know, it, I hope that by me talking about such things, it helps you to come out and say your piece and let it out, because we know that a lot of stuff kept in can leave, it can stunt your growth and keep you from moving forward. But no, 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 no. For me, letting it all out is the best thing. You know, some people feel so ashamed they can't, but I notice when I do it, it's like a release kind of thing, because I don't like nothing staying in there too long. Everyone used to always say to me, look him up there, look. Gordon Bennett, look, right outside the balcony, right, right outside the balcony where uh, the man threw me out of, uh, threw me out of, and all the school kids were laughing along that balcony when I pulled out the compass and, you know, I stabbed him, you know, and look, even when I look up there, you see the bedroom, and you think to yourself, you think, fucking hell, was it really 50 years ago, 40 years ago, you know, going through all that, but um, no, 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 the loneliness, I believe, and the sinking feeling comes from a mixture of things with loss, love, rejection, all the things that were taken away from you at vital times that you never got to experience in a normal way like many do get the chance to do, which leaves you to your own devices and learning what you were taught from the teachers that were around you. And in later life now, like we said in many other things already, I take the power back because they think like, oh, sorry, I was meant to say that earlier. They think that they hold the power and that, that you must think a certain way and feel a certain way uh, because it meant that back in the day, it made you feel like that, these feelings that, you know, are brought on basically by those that are around you. But in later life, I believe you have the power to change the way that you were taught and right size that thinking and get back into what it really meant that you walk past here you meant oh god anger bitterness da, 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 da. yes that's allowed but to right size it to have control over what it means that something that's happened but something that's happened that you can help others with and move forward and try and and, and prevent it you know prevent uh, things happening again and letting people see that you can move on and get away from it all, you know? It's easier said than done, I know. Uh, here's me to me talking and telling you all this because <laughs> I'm in a good place at the moment and I'm ready. But um, no, I think I've talking too much, but in the documentaries coming soon. And also, yeah, you lot have been saying for months about the audio books. Well, hey, I've had two phone calls today asking me not just uh, to do audios on True Crime, other things as well, but they're outside, uh, the companies are outside England. Uh, so you've been telling me that for months, saying, Samson, Yami, why, why don't you ever think about doing this and doing that? So we've got other little prospects coming as well now away from the channel. Uh, as well as that, uh, what else, what else, what else? Yeah, I'll be back up in a minute. I'm just going to go somewhere else, have a bit of lunch, and I'll be back up for more videos. And Darren Wallace, your proper stuff, you make me laugh, you know. The reason why I was laughing the other day, I remember a couple of months ago, you said to me, you said to me, Yami, look, just get your head down and go and get some rest. <laughs> You're really funny, you are. I know, I know, I know, during that torrid time. I know you're still trying to make an appearance and you don't know what anything means when you're tired and you're suffering and you're detoxing or whatever. Whatever. but there you are that's it there it's all coming soon the real life documentary from start to finish uh, that very interesting for the youngsters as well you know especially uh, you know with the way that I was taught with the belonging uh, wanting to belong to this group and that group and this group and now we realize in later life that there's many 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 other good avenues and good people uh, that you can be around. You don't have to be around um, the same people all the time to get the same old feeling to make you feel a certain way. But let me finish now. I think I've babbled on too long. But um, yeah, I think I'm surprised I handled this all right today. Anyway, I'm going to make my way back. I'll be going off over, over the Docklands today as well, later on. And um, sending you loads of love. Big love, TJ, to you as well, my darling. Oh God, it won't 